All right, if we're ready, I'll call to order the November 10th, 2014 okay. meeting of the City Council Ordinance Committee. I'm Councilor David Murphy. I'm chairing. Councilor Maureen Carney is here with me. Councilor Ryan O'Donnell is here with me. Uh, Councilor Alan Seawall, City Solicitor, is here with me. Uh, and the Mayor's here joining us tonight. And if we can, we can uh, beg your indulgence, um, on the second page of our agenda, um, our number of ordinances that we need to deal with in support of the mayor's administrative order. And since our public hearing was scheduled for 515, we have a little extra time, so we can deal with the mayor's ordinances. We'll get him on his way before our public hearing starts. Um, so so just go through them, I just we'll throw the floor to you, sir, okay. and uh, go ahead and explain them. And so, we can so thank you very much, uh, members of the committee. This is um, basically going through all the ordinances and either deleting or amending uh, certain ordinances to make them align and reflect the changes that are in the administrative order. Um, in some cases, we're deleting things that are now in the administrative order and no longer need to be in the ordinance. In some cases, we are changing the names of the boards or the, or the agency that's in charge of certain things. Um, and so I'll just, I'll just quickly go through them. The first one, Community Preservation Committee, is actually um, two, well, one, two significant things that are going on here. First of all, we're deleting Chapter 22, which is currently the home of many of the committees and boards. Um, it used to be the home of the City Council Committees before you deleted those and moved them into the rules. Um, the only committee in Chapter 22 that we're not deleting is the Community Preservation Committee because the state law that sets up the CPA says that that committee has to be done in an ordinance. So what's happening here is we're literally deleting everything in Chapter 22, changing its name from commissions and committees to just making it Chapter 22, the Community Preservation Committee. So it's just gonna be forevermore the chapter that has the Community Preservation Committee in. The second one is agriculture. Um, again, all we're doing here is excising the, uh, the Agriculture Commission portion of that agenda. We're leaving all of the declaratory statements about having a policy about the right to farm, et cetera. Um, and you'll see that in some cases, um, we have decided to just, where there's a 111-2 a or 111-3 upon the advice of the city solicitor, we are, um, we're saying reserve C administrative order if only to create some kind of a cross-reference so that someone who goes and looks at the order and says, you know, there's no longer an agricultural commission, but there still is, and, and, and people will hopefully know to go refer to the, to the administrative order. So that's the change on that one. The next one is a, a series of deletions, um, and you'll see um, everything from the Affordable Housing Trust, uh, to claims, to chapter 22 commissions and committees, although that one we probably don't need to have on there since um, we've already handled it on this particular ordinance. Um, departments, which no longer needs to be in the ordinance book because it's all in the administrative code, right down the line. Um, we did retain um, in chapter 153 and in chapter 156 and in chapter 195, um, we did, um, only delete some of the sections and then we put this reserve to the administrative order uh, sign. And then finally, chapter 264, article two banners, uh, we deleted because it was this ordinance about hanging banners across Main Street, which really we don't do anymore. Um, and it just seemed bizarre to have it in an ordinance. So that one's being deleted as well. Um, we now move into a, a series of them that are basically dealing with the change to the Department of Public Works, the elimination of the Board of Public Works, um, the creation of a Public Works Commission, and the delegation of much of the day-to-day -day oversight of the department to the Department of Public Works or to the Director of Public Works or his or her designee. So in this ordinance, it's mainly um, either changing it to Department of Public Works instead of Board, or, um, or the, the director of public works or his or her designee. We're trying to be consistent throughout the ordinances. Um, the next one, horse-drawn carriages. Uh, again, uh, to the extent that we have many of those, where the day-to-day -day authority for that goes to the Department of Public Works, the regular horse-drawn carriages. 
um, traffic signs and signals. Um, this is one that is sort of, uh, we're eliminating a number of things in the beginning of the chapter that really don't happen and they're covered in the administrative order that talks about the Transportation and Parking Commission's duties. Um, and then in the second half, uh, again, we're trying to standardize to the director of public works or his or her designee instead of using city engineer. In some parts we say city engineer, in other parts we say director. We want to standardize and just have it be the director of public works. Um, temporary events, we're, this is one that we're just basically changing it to the Department of Public Works as the permitting entity for uh, temporary events. Very straightforward. Um, in the subdivision of land chapter, which is the next one, again, uh, the changes you'll see here are anywhere there's a city engineer, it gets changed to director of public works, um, and anywhere there's a reference to uh, the board of public, actually there is no reference in this one, it's purely just changing it to the director of public works. Stormwater management, um, this one is basically uh, changing uh, where it's, where it's listed BPW to DPW, um, and then the director in place of, of the city engineer. Those are the two basic changes in that one. In the stormwater and flood control utility that we just created, um, basically it's replacing the Board of Public Works with the Director of Public Works. The Director of Public Works will recommend an annual budget um, to the mayor. Um, and that's the, uh, that follows throughout the rest the other change that happens in the back, there's several instances where there can be hearings, um, or where, where, where there can be appeals, rather, and the Department of Public Works may rule on someone's um, a, a request for an abatement on a water bill or a stormwater bill, and in that case, that appeal would go to me, the mayor. Um, and, uh, and there's precedent for that in some other areas, including uh, trees and other things where I'm, I'm currently the appeal person. So it just made sense to standardize those appeals to come to me in the rare instances when those happen. The next one is storm drains. Um, again, uh, we have either gotten rid of language that no longer that refers to the Board of Public Works having some sort of authority over employees. Um, and again, that's primarily what's happening here, either replacing BPW with DPW, or um, removing any references to the BPW uh, promulgating rules, et cetera. Wetlands protection, again, this is mainly changing, this is primarily changing city engineer to DPW director. Signs, this is actually um, both a wording change, but also a, a, a policy change, and I think it makes more sense. Um, in discussing all of the various sidewalk signs downtown, primarily the uh, infamous um, sign board, sandwich boards, in talking with the DPW and actually with talking to the building commissioner, we all agree that it made more sense to have the building commissioner be the enforcing agent for sandwich board signs. It made more sense to have somebody who's already downtown doing enforcement. Um, it just makes more sense as opposed to having this one area relying on folks up at the DPW to come down and, and enforce these things. Uh, the building commissioner will coordinate with the DPW on sidewalk issues, et cetera, but they will be the primary enforcement agency. So that's the change in that one. Um, sewer assessments, again, uh, we, this talks, this in some ways implements the change away from the Board of Public Works, setting the sewer rates, um, but it also changes references from board to department. Uh, as well as city engineer to director where those occur. Uh, but that's the main things that are happening there. Um, side, streets and sidewalk ordinance, uh, similar um, changes. It does talk, it does delete some really ancient, um, ancient uh, regulations that no longer exist, but it also corrects, like the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, for example, changes BPW to DPW, um, and then uh, in a couple of cases, there was a, a really old ordinance about lowering merchandise over streets from buildings, which um, nobody could remember what that was or when it ever happened. So we felt that that should probably be removed. Um, so that's the main change in that particular ordinance. Parades and processions, again, changing 
This is the one that read the director of the Board of Public Works. That's what it read. That's what it reads right now, um, which doesn't refer to anything that currently exists. So it just says the director of the Department of Public Works is what we're changing it to. Um, the next is the is the table of list of enforcing officers. This has read uh, forever. <coughs> City engineer as the enforcement agent. We're just changing it to a more standardized director of public works or his or her designee. Because there may be cases where Ned will send a city engineer out to enforce something. He may want the stormwater management manager to be the one to go out and, and enforce something. So it just keeps uh, it more consistent. Uh, buildings and numbering of buildings. Again, uh, you'll see, again, just making the change from city engineer to director of public works is the primary change in that one. Um, I don't think there are any references to DPW in that one. That's mainly just about the engineer being changed. Uh, solid waste. Um, this one, there is a couple of, this goes not only uh, does it make changes in terms of the BPW and the DPW, we have eliminated several sections of the ordinance that refer to tipping fees at the landfill um, and permits for dumping at the landfill, um, things that we, I think, neglected to clean up when the landfill closed. Um, but we're no longer doing that. We're no longer in that business. We're no longer selling permits. So. Um, this makes changes to the BPW, DPW change, but it also goes through and, uh, and deletes any of the sections that deal with um, selling permits for dumping at the landfill. Um, so that's that one. Uh, and I believe those are all of them. Um, there were a couple of others that were sent to you, but those aren't actually ordinances. Uh, they're actually orders, uh, because in four cases, we actually need the city council to accept state laws um, that we, in some cases, hadn't previously accepted. I think that's correct. Um, including to establish a conservation commission is one of them. Since we're moving it from the ordinances, uh, we want uh, the city council to accept the statute. Uh, the statute. And there yeah. was language that I provided that exactly. re reference back to the initial acceptance of, of, uh, of the committee with the statute. Yeah, because before I think the original ordinance kind of made reference to the state law, but it was not a direct on acceptance of the right. state law. So we just wanted to make sure there could be no doubt that we had accepted the state law. And so, and that's probably similar with when the only historic people because they are. I don't remember it was one. That's right. the other one too. Yeah. One right. Right. Yeah. So you got The other one's establishing a historical commission, um, and then there's also a historic district commission. Mm -hmm. is the other one that we're accepting as well. And so that's done with orders? Uh, done with orders, yeah. yeah. Done order. with orders, okay. yeah. The only other one is the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, which is a state law. We've always had an affordable housing trust, but now we're actually accepting the state law mm -hmm. um, as well. So those are four that aren't before you, but they're also supplemental. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the ordinances. That's the, uh, wow, the 10-minute or 12-minute version of them all. Um, and I don't know if you have individual or specific questions about them. Well, we will open it up for that. You've got I them know. all. I have a quick question. You've got them sure. all in front of you, so go right in. Yeah, I'm spreading spread them, them all out. out. Um, I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about um, the, the appeal process for the stormwater fee. Okay. Um, and, and why that goes to the mayor um, rather than the Department of Public Works. It's something you would just turn around and sort of delegate to the Department of Public Works. Since there in the executive branch? Or no, I, it, it does go to the DPW first. It goes to the DPW first. So if somebody has a question about their um, bill or about, I'm fairly certain it goes to the DPW first. If someone wants to appeal, oh, the DPW, appeal. Oh, okay. yeah. So, so if they disagree, if they don't get satisfaction with the DPW, okay. they can appeal it to me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what it's about. Under the old, it said that it would go to the Board of Public Works right. and gotcha. that they would be the the appellate body. It just didn't make sense to have them be in that position. They advise the, well, exactly. Advise the exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And that's consistent also with water abatements and sewer abatements as well. If somebody gets a sewer bill, they disagree, they go to the department and make their case and they don't get satisfaction, they can appeal it to me. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Just along that same line then, um, the mayor's office is not then the ultimate decision a person could then go to court. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. As yeah. is the case now with any uh, 
claims that are in the same way that we mm -hmm. have tickets, the business yeah, of, uh, I mean, claims. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It goes to insurance. Well, I think it's uh, automatically goes directly to insurance, and then a person can bring that decision to court. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. The only there is a um, I, I went through it so quickly. I mean the. the Public Works Commission, um, there, there are a couple of roles that they still retain, um, primarily in the streets and sidewalk one, we maintain the whole public hearing part for, for Public Works Commission um, to have public hearings on, on ways, on public ways. We thought that that was still a valuable role to have that body play, um, and then they would make a recommendation just like the planning board holds a public hearing and makes a recommendation, it's sort of, I think it's analogous to that. The ultimate decision is the city council and the mayor um, and, and the recommendation of either the planning board or the public works commission are not binding on the, on the city council and mayor, but it just seems, so we did keep that construct of a hearing on those issues because we felt like that would be better to have some kind of a public forum for people to present that kind of information. But other than that, uh, this pretty much uh, enacts everything that's in the administrative order and cleans up some other stuff along the way. Any further questions on these? Uh, none from me beyond the hearings that we've already had. I have a quick question of sort of curiosity. I mean, I saw in here a deletion of, for example, the Hampshire County commissioners. You know, so I'm wondering, you know, if, if there are things that were missed in trying to upgrade the code, um, you know, uh, is this, do we just um, going forward assume what was probably meant? You know, for example, if we if we have an instance of the Board of Public Works that just we've missed somewhere and it's still yeah. there, we just kind of uh, we'll deal with it at that point and assume it means the commission because yeah, I think we've caught it. And there's actually going to be one more ordinance coming forward that's going to be out. We found one more. Uh, I think it's with sewers or I forget which one it is. We found one more that does have a reference to the BPW. So we're going to be sending that's going to be lagging behind. But I think effectively the administrative order trumps the ordinance. Right. So it, that would, you know, if there is a reference to the BPW, it doesn't really have any legal weight at this point. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, thank that you. That would be my mm -hmm. take on it. So you're set? Any other questions? No. So a motion perhaps. We don't have any more questions or discussion. Well, I, discussion? Move, I move we take these as a, a group. And you're moving them as a group? I, Positive I, recommendation? Sure. Yes. Second. And I, I assume that actually it would have to go as a group as one administrative order. Is that yes. correct? We could separate some out, but council would do that if they chose to. I, so that, I don't think you I can. Don't. Well, <laughs> what it says is that the administrative orders are an up or down vote. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I don't think it says anything about it the doesn't. ordinances that are implemented, so yeah. it would be uh, an awkward result. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just as we, if you, mm -hmm. we recommend I, the order. Well, I, I recommend the series of ordinances in support of the order. Mm -hmm. And that you second. Correct way to say. All right, is there any more discussion on it? No? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? No? Good. Thank you very much for, for letting me getting you go run right in. I was I was a little surprised. I thought this wasn't happening to you the next meeting, so I'm glad it is. They're off the What's that? Caught you off guard. I'm sorry. No, it's totally fine. Okay. No, it's totally fine. I didn't think you wanted to wait a month. So. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Okay. It makes sense because now these will all arrive on the second reading of the administrative order, so that will that will make sense. So okay. thank you all. Get this. Thank try you. get this whole charter thing finally finished. It's been a while. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll let you guys talk about subdivision, I hope, zoning and other things. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we'll get go back to the beginning of our agenda and we'll have a motion to reopen the public hearing. So uh, second. So in. All right. All in favor? Aye. So Carolyn, you're on. Here we are again. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have, um, this is the, the first public hearing screening of some changes that you're going to recommend? Yes. Okay. And Carol has seen them, correct? Correct. Correct. And um, so, you know, this got 
continue so that we can have further public conversation with some more um, neighborhood groups and also specifically the um, housing partnership mm -hmm. and also energy commission. So we kind of had a couple rounds with um, housing partnership and um, they um, are comfortable um, with the proposed amendments. Um, basically, they, they wanted the subject heading change um, under the affordable housing um, requirement as part of the special permit for um, construction of more than seven units to be broader and not just about affordable housing, but about, um, as recommended in the amendment, um, uh, size, access, and affordability is the name that Councillor O'Donnell, uh, or the heading that Councillor O'Donnell um, suggested. And um, they are um, um, uh, basically like the two step approach of um, requiring um, either a percentage of the um, units to be affordable at 11% or um, containing smaller uh, percentage, 25 percent containing smaller um, size footprints um, at 1,200 square feet. So that was, and, and then there were a couple other amendments that they also reviewed relative to equity access um, in housing units, and um, they were supportive of that. Um, and um, then when we had some language changes going back to the Energy Commission um, that. The Energy Commission supported in the in item D, environment and energy, related to a standard about um, requiring increased energy efficiency for these units that they either be um, lead gold or neighborhood development gold certified, or that there be a HERS rating for the building envelope at least 25% lower than the current municipal energy standard at the time the special permit is requested, um, but no greater than either a HERS rating of 47 for 1,200 square foot units or no greater than 40, a HERS rating of 41 for units larger than 1,200 square feet um, with an additional caveat that we can discuss. I don't know if you got my email um, earlier this afternoon. But the issue here about this um, HERS rating and splitting it based on the building size <coughs> is that it really makes a difference in the whole conversation about whether or not the standard is too onerous to achieve the HERS rating um, of 41. And um, the building commissioner was in agreement that the um, standard is much more difficult to achieve for a smaller building because it's really taken um, um, based on the on the wall volume of, of construction. So the smaller the unit, the harder it is to um, get to that ratio. So that's why there's this split between building size and we tied it to the same size building um, that would be as part of the affordability or the size and, um, and affordability standard of 1,200 square feet. Um, so that's why those two standards are there. In speaking, a little bit more detail with the building commissioner this afternoon. Um, he thinks those are achievable, but because the whole system uh, and standards for energy efficiency in the building code and the international building code are currently in flux, and the um, the um, the um, stretch code is sort of in motion now too that he thought it would be appropriate to allow a caveat that um, would provide for um, alternative energy standards that are comparable to this HERS rating standard um, if the planning board approves it. So that would create additional flexibility um, as we move forward so we don't have to come back and amend the ordinance immediately upon changes to the building code as it relates to energy efficiencies. So this isn't written here, but um, I would suggest that um, an additional sentence be added um, that allows that um, flexibility for the planning board to evaluate other comparable energy standards based on um, consultation with the building commissioner. Where would you add that? In this paragraph under D, 
um, where it says home energy rating um, for building envelope of at least 25% lower than the current municipal energy standard at the time of special permit requested. And then the whole issue about, but no greater than 47 for units of 1,200 square feet, no less um, or less, and no greater than 41 for units larger than 1,200 square feet. After that sentence, say that the planning board could consider a comparable alternative um, energy standard um, upon with consultation with the building commissioner. But so that language is not in here now. That's not in what's in front of you because it was something that we just sort of hashed yeah. out this afternoon. I don't have it. If somebody had a pen to notate that, I mean, I'd be willing to offer that. But I, know that. I don't want to take your pen, but if someone, if you'd offer it again, we'll yeah. Yeah. Thank you. or the counselor, because it's part of the amendment. If you guys are friendly, it's part of your. Um, yeah, I think we have to find the right words. And the, you know, for example, the word comparable. I mean. I don't know. Is, it, is that the right or is it is it assure the same level of strictness as the current language which actually specifies the numbers that we're trying to achieve? That would be my concern. Well, I think um, I think it's an I think it's an appropriate term um, because then that can be debated in front of the planning board. The building commissioner could provide his expertise on whether or not an energy rating, a HERS energy rating is comparable to some other standard that the applicant might be providing um, that achieves um, those energy efficiencies. So we're really writing a, a, a bullet point C here, right? This is not just an add-on or an option within A. It's C, it's a third thing that well, I, I guess I would say it's part of um, A uh -huh. because if, for instance, someone who's building a 1,200 square foot unit can't quite get to 47, mm -hmm. um, hers rating 47, there may be something else that they can include in their building construction that um, is comparable to a 47, but it's not specifically a 47 under hers. And that was only, that was his concern is that all of this, there are new standards coming along um, as we speak. And so instead of, you know, having to set in stone and then having to come back and amend the ordinance when we do know what that new standard is, I mean, the alternative is to leave it as is and see how it goes. And yeah. if, you know, there's another standard that makes more sense later, come back and amend it. So that's, that's right. another option. So just to follow up, just just briefly, um, so it seems like you're seeking flexibility, which is fine. Um, but that would seem to me that we would change the first sentence: buildings shall meet one of the following environmental standards, unless the planning board, in consultation with the building inspector, found a reasonable alter alternative or something. Well, I I think what uh, Carolyn's talking about is something that's comparable to a hers rating of 47. And it's very specific to the HERS rating of 47. Right, right. And so if that particular rating, which, uh, for example, the US Green Building Council lead new construction goal, that's a standard. Behind that standard, there are things happening that could change. And, mm -hmm. and so the standards to meet that, the criteria for meeting that standard change behind the scenes. And you don't have to change your ordinance because it's there. And whatever that is, this is. But when you put in 41 and 47, when those standards change, you then have to amend your ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what the, what the suggestion is, and, uh, and then it becomes a policy consideration for you, whether you want to do it that way and change the ordinance when the standards change, or do you want to give the planning board the authority to exercise some discretion in determining that some other standard that's being met uh, is comparable to or the equivalent of a HERS 47. Did I right. summarize that? Perfect. And that's what okay. the, the planning board was hoping for, is that discretion or that flexibility? Um, so when we went, oh, we didn't take that specific, because um, the building commissioner and I just sort of talked about this this afternoon, the planning board didn't hear about that 
flexibility. But I think you know we brought back the issue of the HERS rating and having a differential between uh, based on building size, and they were fine with that because understanding that it's different depending on how big your structure is. Um, this concern came from Lou Hasbrook. Yeah, the conversation with right. Lou. Okay. Right. Yeah. I haven't met many planning boards or zoning boards who don't want to have some discretion because it makes it difficult because right. you, you know if somebody's at a 46 and a half or right. 47 and a half or whatever the and you say sorry and you right. rattle luck and maybe that's appropriate I, 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 I'm not you know so I'm just I'll, I'll defer to the counselor if he wants to put that like, I was more just figuring out how that and it sounds like it was more a matter of where to put that little discretionary language right. in at the beginning or in A or in C. Or in C. And so and, and I think A to C or I, I think A, A could be uh, that what's existing could be made a little clearer by um, when I read 47, no greater than 47, <laughs> I didn't know what 47 was when you just read that. And so it should say uh, at the time the special permit is requested, but in no event shall the HERS rating be greater than 47 for units of 1,200 square feet. I'll give this to you. Uh, and uh, it, just, it just makes it clear uh, what that 47 is. That, I mean, that sounds like a, a reasonable change to, to clarify. Um, I mean, it's something we should clarify before we actually recommend this forward to the council, and we don't want to wait another <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, that that change proposed by the solicitor makes sense. So, can we revisit the, the exact wording that um, you propose? Uh, yeah. Carol? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to write it out here okay. for a second if you can. <laughs> um, So then there's um, period after 1,200 square feet, so it's the second sentence in this paragraph. Alternatively, the planning board may consider an alternative, um, I want to say that twice, <laughs> may consider um, a comparable energy efficiency standard based on uh, input by the building commissioner. So, okay, and the assumption is the word comparable is, is sufficient to make it clear that we're looking for a standard that is clo as close as possible to 47. Or yeah. it, I guess to me, it, you could repeat it. You could say comparable to the HERS rating of 47. Okay. Right? Or the HERS rating of 41 right. as applicable for something like that. Right. Yeah, it's really meant for the 47. So HERS rating uh, of 47 for 1,200 square feet. Yeah. Right. No, that's. The other word that's used as opposed to comparable is equivalent. That might give you, um, okay. That's fine. I always find equivalent to be more, I mean, sounds like equal, whereas comparable means that there's some comparison that can be made <laughs> and it doesn't require as close a connection as equivalent. Yeah, I, I, I guess it is, I, I wonder how how do you measure those things? You have an entirely different standard you're using. How, how, how do you determine whether it is equivalent to 47 on a very specific I think in this case, we're, in this case, we'd be having the building commissioner make that determination. Right. It's just kind of. Or, or at least make a recommendation. I think the planning board needs to make the finding that this is an equivalent or comparable right. system. But we'll do that with input from the building commissioner. And you know there just could be other rating scales that are equally supportable, which, and would come out with something like Ehrs 47 
But then, of course, the question is if, if, if that other rating would come out with something like a HERS 47, then why is it not coming out as a HERS 47? Right. Well, I mean, you know, it could be, it could be some other standard that's created that's not, you know, that has another scale. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, I yeah. do get that. Um, but if we're going to determine that there's, there's an equivalency, then why is it not meeting the HERS 47 scale? Or are you saying that HERS 47 scale may be obsolete and there's a whole new scale? Right. That, that's what I'm saying. Okay. It could be that there's some other scale that's used or some other measurement of energy efficiency that's used um, when, as we move forward um, with changes to... So, for example, if there were, but if you ended up looking internationally at different countries, they don't use a hers. They might use something different in Australia. You know, this whatever, right. whatever that's called. Right. So, just in the it's case somehow that there was a reference to something or a product that someone was using in their home or a fixture or something yeah. that came in for which wattage or whatever other um, stuff you couldn't. Mm -hmm. It would be difficult to make a U.S. comparison. You might be able to refer it to another international index. I, I don't I, think we have to be specific. I think we, we would leave that. That's my thought. So it's, it's a philosophical question whether you want to return to the ordinance and amend it with this. If there is a new index that exactly. emerges that we have an interest in using, then we could go in and amend Or it. build in the pre you know, build in that flexibility ahead of time. I think the concern is you wouldn't want to end up in a situation like the one the solicitor just referenced where you ended up with something with a HERS rating of 46.8 and then the rigidity of the ordinance didn't allow us to then, whereas somebody, you know, you could look at it and be able to make the determination that there's something comparable to. And I, you know, I think there's suppose it, I think if the fear is that it opens it up to abuse in some way, there's probably some way to um, safeguard that just by virtue of the building commissioner and the planning board. There are a number of sets of eyes that are on them. But I'm not sure if that's what the concern, if, if there's a concern on that. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of giving um, a judicious amount of, of leeway to the planning board if you think that's a good decision. I'm just struggling with a way to, to award it in a way that doesn't seem problematic. Uh, I mean, could you kind of have, for lack of a better way of saying, you know, a plus or minus percentage, you know, like approximately 47, approximately 41, to provide that leeway in case, as Councilor Carney points out, you wind up with 46 and a half? I think that's more, that's too loose. That's what I would recommend. I think you need a hard and fast number but if their standards change, this gives the planning board to weigh these different things with input from the building commissioner to say, yes, this is equivalent to what the ordinance said. Well, if we go with equivalent or comparable, this is equivalent, so it makes sense for the board to go ahead and approve that. Um, and because I think it was pretty clear that we wanted a, um, a number that is that will get us more towards our greenhouse gas emission reduction standards. And so um, in order to do that, you know, you need to have a, a rigorous number. Um, really, the only issue from the building commission was that things are in flux and these standards and numbers may be changing. So that, and he wasn't beholden to that either. He said, you know, either we could go forward the way it is and just know that we might need to come back and tweak the ordinance, or we could build in some language that allows you to sort of tweak it as you go <laughs> under the discretion of the planning board. So, Carolyn, can I just suggest alternatively for units of 1,200 square feet or less, the planning board may consider a comparable energy standard to the HERS rating of 47 after consultation with the building commissioner? That's perfect, except if you want to use equivalent versus comparable. Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. I, my suggestion is comparable rather than equivalent, just because equivalent is so, it's hard to actually say that something equals something. And, and then again, my concern was also just looking at the various other rating systems, international and Canada being the closest. So they use the Guide, and you know, 
UK uses no door in Australia. We're not ordering them, but it's possible that you could end up with a, either a modular home or something else that you know uses a different rating, but ends up being imported and built on an already existing one. <coughs> And as the counselor, which would you rather take to court, comparable, comparable or equivalent? <laughs> um, I would tell you that the the planning board is going to get more leeway with comparable than it yeah, would with equivalent. equivalent. Yeah. And beyond that, it's it's the call yeah. of the council to determine how much how much discretion you really want to give the planning board on this. And mm -hmm. Either one is defensible. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's nicer to give them more leeway than less just because you never know what you're going to see. I mean, it was great success with the Central Business Architectural Committee because of the fact that they had a lot of flexibility because there were some really interesting projects that could come along that, you know, didn't fit the cookie cutter, but they were worth doing. And I think we can trust the planning board to be reasonable. If that's the sense of the committee, I'm happy to su support that. Um, but I, yeah, just, I, I don't <coughs> quite understand how something can be comparable yet not meet the HERS rating that it's comparable to. I'm just hung up on that. But if you feel it's something that's good policy, then it doesn't seem like it's a dramatic, it, I don't believe it undermines the amendment. I, if you'll accept it as a friendly sure. amendment to your thing, I'll second that. Because hey, my concern is at some point during the life of this ordinance, there could be another entire rating yeah. system that's come right, up with. Right, that's the, yeah. And, and that everybody decides, oh, this is much better and we want to go with this. And before we can recognize it, we've got to, this has been a lengthy procedure. I'd rather not have to go through it all over again just to recognize the new and approved right. rating system that, right. that now right. everybody wants to use. But that would, that's why I brought up the example of, I mean, modular things are coming all the yeah. time. And you could have a, you know, a log home with a, with a, you know, a Canadian rating that uses a different system and would die. And then somebody would have to actually go in and do all of the math and calculations to see you know, whether a uh, 65 in the enter guide is, the, is equivalent to a 47, and that might, I don't know, I mean, that's why if we have some way that we can have people more accustomed to doing that with the just building commission or our planning board or staff. Mm -hmm. Good, so we got the, the learned folks agree and we got the right language here. Could the language be read so we're clear on what we're going on? Or accepting as a friendly amendment? Say so that right again. again. Okay, so. <coughs> you want me to do mine? The, one, the language I gave you would be easier for me to just do it? Well, I was going to do yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, home energy rating system. Hers rating for the building envelope at least 25% lower than the current municipal energy standard at the time the special permit is requested. Somehow I lost it. Uh, but in no event shall the Hers rating be greater than 47% or units. I'm, I'm sorry, 47 for units of 1,200 square feet or less, and no greater than 41 for units larger than 1,200 square feet. Well, where's the reference to the? Then there's another sentence yeah. that you go on with. The, that's Alternative, the alternatively, for the units of 1,200 square feet or less, the planning board may consider a comparable energy standard to the HERS rating of 47 after consultation with the building commissioner. Okay, that work. So, is that all of your proposed amendments? You got one? No, no, I didn't. I, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> present any of them. I didn't present any of them. Yeah. No, but that would that would have to be accepted as part of your amendment if you wanted it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming oh, you. Yeah, no. If you like that to be part, I'm happy to accept it as a friendly amendment. Absolutely. I don't know if it's a friendly amendment to the oh. amendment. You, I think you actually have to. Either that or it has to be in a whole additional amendment. Well, I mean, do, do we consider all these amendments to be sort of on the floor at, at currently? Or? Well, we're done with one topic. We should go through them. Okay. I think procedurally the question is, do we have to take this one up separately, the one that we just got the language for? Mm -hmm. Or would this be considered part of Amendment D, 
that's part of Councilor O'Donnell's whole set of amendments. And I, I thought it would make sense that it's part of that, unless there's some discomfort with that and we could do it in a different way. Well, let's see. How do you want to I'm proceed sorry, with the rest of your amendments? And then we, that would help determine how we want to deal with this one thing. Okay. Um, well, I mean, to, to answer Councilor Carney's question, I'm, I'm, I think we just, since none of these have actually been motioned for, right? We, they're just kind of written on paper. We could assume that those changes have been incorporated. In, okay. If that's okay with you. Fine. Okay, okay. great. And then um, when, it, when that amendment When we get is, to that one. Yeah. It'll then, be, that will be as assumed. you propose yes. it now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it'll that's be considered part fine. of the O'Donnell yes. amendments. Okay. 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 Donald Carney. Well, no, I don't think my name gets attached onto it unless you want, unless you want me to make it. I'm happy to do it, but it, you know, it just makes sense if it's already written up. Except, you know, I just, if you don't want it, then oh, no, I can I, like like separately I said, introduce perfectly it. perfectly happy to. So why don't, we start with, why don't we start with your amendments okay. and go through them. And Carolyn, you've seen these, correct? Yes, I mean, I, I'm losing track of how, you know, how much the committee has seen and how much everybody else is seeing. So I don't, you know, I thought that it would come to you a couple times. May I just briefly kind of run down? Yes, just for please clarity. do. Okay. So the, the the first one at the top is very is very straightforward. Is this it's the one that's withdrawn? Excuse me. This my mine it says withdrawn. No, it's even before that. It's on the very first page here. It just says reorganization of the sections. Oh, okay. So I guess the, the first amendment I would make is is represented by this, which this simply takes all the bullet points in what the planning board recommended and reorganizes them and groups them into sections by subject, such as buildings and parking, streets and roadways, park space, environment and energy, affordable housing, and create the second section, the purpose of which is to change the table in this same section of the code. So it reorganizes it. And it's on the basis of this that all the other ones uh, are, are, are made. So I don't know if it makes sense to to, to vote on that separately, or, or do you want to? I don't know what you want to. May I make a suggestion Please. that we actually, after you've explained, because I don't think that there's a lot of. I mean, we've heard before where the, that you go through them all. Sure. And then we can mm -hmm. accept them okay. or not, rather than take each and every one and and, sure. mm -hmm. okay. and just accept. to bounce off, Carolyn. Are you guys comfortable with the restructuring of it for oh, organizational yeah. purposes? Okay. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Good. All right, then okay. with that accepted, so, let's go through the proposed amendments and we'll just great. talk about them and check in with Carolyn one by one and see where the, it gets us. The, okay. Uh, the proposed amendments um, sort of assume that the first amendment is, yes. is accepted. The reorganization. Okay. And so the, it takes us uh, section by section. So amendment number two, so the park space um, basically increases the amount of park space required. Uh, per dwelling unit mm -hmm. from 100 to 150 uh, minimum and from 10 to 10, excuse me, 10 to 15 square feet per dwelling unit, per dwelling unit okay. whichever is greater. And just to and check um, in, and you guys planning to do that? Yes, and all of these went back to the planning board too right. as, as you requested. So, so, they, all yeah, of these so have gone. They, this yeah. is no surprise to them. Right. Okay. Excellent. We want to keep um, them in the process. The, <clears throat> yeah, that, that was the case for all these amendments. The second okay. part of this is another, there's more flexibility, um, saying that this could be waived upon finding it's in, within the public interest. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, if there's a geographic, like a boulder or something that <laughs> <laughs> makes it impossible for the park space to be contiguous, then they could waive it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next one is streets and roadways. It is pretty much self explanatory. I could read it aloud because it's very brief. Mm -hmm. um, vehicular access shall connect to surrounding streets as appropriate to ensure safe and efficient flow of traffic within the surrounding neighborhood and to mitigate, mitigate increases in traffic on nearby streets. Mm -hmm. And also pre-existing paths historically used as bicycle and pedestrian trails shall be preserved to the extent possible and marked with appropriate signage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number four is, is um, more interesting in a way, as Carolyn points out, the title changes to size, access, and affordability. Um, buildings shall meet one of the following standards. Originally it was 10% of the units shall be uh, affordable units as defined 
um, in the section of uh, the code that defines what an affordable unit is, and we changed it to 11%, and the rationale, I think, was citywide, our percentage of affordable housing is, is about 11%. We thought that would be a reasonable change. Um, so change <coughs> what is it? What's that? I, I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. Just, just to um, clarify that again then. So because affordable housing represents 11% of this housing stock, then, this, then that makes then sense in order to keep the that. The development under this would have to match the city. Well, it just makes sense to make it consistent. That's a good, and how yeah. did, that, did that just, um, did that just kind of come to you? I mean, I'm just wondering how that. I don't remember. Maybe it was your suggestion. Well, we were, <laughs> we were, I think, talking about affordability and why we should pick 10%. And we said, well, actually, the current number is like 11.3%. 11. 11. Oh, so why not be 11? And oh, so 11. why not be 11? It matched the, because then the, the, then the theoretical rest of the city. The reason for the 11 is because it is what, what represents the present. Right. Okay. Of course, that's a, a number that fluctuates. We always want to keep it above 10 because and we control a lot yeah. of the process of developing affordable housing if we're over 10 percent but if we had kept it at 10 that could have been seen as a maximum and a ceiling that we would want to avoid right. in terms of uh, a general stock of affordable housing the, the so idea is to keep it at 10. Um, it's a good idea to require each project to have more than 10 because yes. uh, non-affordable housing stock is being built and so the percentages right. Right, are constantly shifting. Okay, good. And, and the other, I think we also were exploring higher percentages as well. Yeah. <laughs> but those met um, mm -hmm. less favorable reception. Okay. So we're at 11. Um, second part of this is equal access. Um, all projects shall provide equal access to all building amenities, park and civic space, and public entrances to the buildings, mm -hmm. to residents of both affordable and non affordable units. You heard the story in New York City of the building, the so-called four door. They built a uh, mixed-use skyscraper, uh, which I don't expect to see yeah. in Northampton anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, no <coughs> for uh, yeah, housekeeping staff or something like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and this, if this make if that makes sense, I'll move on. The next one, mm -hmm. F is is a similar one about internet connectivity. Um, for various reasons, I, I mean, I, I think I'll exclude this <coughs> from the amendment right now unless others find it interesting and want to incorporate it somehow. I just don't find it. It did seem a little obtuse to me. It was obtuse? Okay. <laughs> um, actually, could you, um, just, is that, um, could you explain why you want to get rid of it? Well, it was obtuse. <coughs> no, I'm just kidding. You. Um, it, um, I, I guess I, I guess well, the intent of it was similar to the equal access part, which is you should provide an equal. Yeah. yeah. The the full price units aren't going to get tag mag and the affordable ones aren't going to get free. Well, the reason I asked that oh. is exactly in the, the news right now about it. I mean, questioning whether internet providers can charge more money to provide customers with mm -hmm. higher broadband. You know, to, yeah, mm -hmm. right. So whether it may be relevant, it may make sense as that two says that may sound. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it. I think it just makes it cumbersome. Particularly, I mean, there's one thing to say that hers ratings are going to change, but technology changes faster than hers ratings do. I don't hate that. But all this says that if there's a technology it's change, the it's going to be equally available yeah, to it's just affordable and yeah. full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think Councilor point is a good one. I mean, there's, there's a reason why it's in the news today, and also. The nexus to affordable housing is pretty clear that you kind of need internet access to help move up, you know, um, whether it's even just look for a job, you know. Yeah, I think the, the point is not so much that there shall be internet. I mean, you, you could actually build a project with no internet connectivity, but if you have it, you can't say that the affordable units don't get it and the non-affordable units get a high broadband. Right. And I think that's the point. That was the intention, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's well, relevant. Well, you know, considering that that the developer doesn't provide it anyway. It's private vendors. You know. So it's not like the developers provide internet access to people. No, the infrastructure. Yeah, the infrastructure is going to be the same. So. But doesn't the developer provide the, the mm -hmm. conduit and the whole? The, yeah. Okay. So as long as they do that in such a way that it isn't um, uh, discriminatory access. Mm -hmm. I still think it's a two-spot. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Well, we'll let it push. I'm sorry. Is it one more? <laughs> it's like Spinal Tap. Crack it up to 11. But that actually was my reference. It's one more than is there. Um, so, um, but I don't know the council of Congress, but if you think it's worth keeping, if it could be stated in a simpler way, I mean, maybe it could be put in number two, the equal I access. I find it that, if, I mean, if, uh, maybe it's just because they're, they're long, multi-syllabic words. I don't know. Well, this Shall does sort of require the provision yeah, it, of it, the it, it doesn't say it offered, it says Right, it will. doesn't really say what you said it says. It doesn't really say that if you're offering it, you gotta offer it. Shall in include. include. Shall include. Oh yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah if okay. It doesn't, so, does, if, if the, so if so there should be an if yeah. then. If the developer is providing it, it has to be right. equally it provided. Be if right. then. Right. If such infrastructure is provided, it should be done in such a way that yeah. there's equal access. Are you comfortable with that change? Um, yeah, I mean I originally I was just not gonna offer it, but if you think that we should go forward with that change. Well I only think it's only because it was like big in the news today and because you thought okay. of it in the it's first place that you know yeah, I fine. trust the initial instinct. Okay. As long as we <laughs> make it that it doesn't require, but if right. we choose to do it it has to be equivalent. If offered yeah. must be equivalent. Okay. So I guess otherwise you're getting to like building code and stuff, you can't yeah. require stuff through zoning to be built into these buildings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that building codes require internet. Infra internet. Yeah. Infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, specifically, yeah. but yeah. Um, you can't yeah. regulate and zoning anything that's covered in the building code. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, if you choose to put it in, you have to do with the code, but you don't have to put it in. But the theory here is because we have a lot of well, the idea is that we would have mixed use developments, and we wouldn't want to have a situation where we had, you know, all of the affordable units have no, they, they just decided to skimp on and didn't put in the infrastructure to allow internet access for those units, but they did for all the others. So if there's a way to just, uh, but with just an if-then clause to make this so that it says right. what we said before. And that, I think that's simple. Well, thank you, I think that's an improvement. Project shall okay. include. So we're gonna amend that just to make it, that if offered, it must be equivalent. Okay, or you could say all projects that that include, and get rid of the shall, all projects that include infrastructure making connectivity, Shall be made available without differences. Okay. You good with that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Good. Thank you very much. That's it. And then we've already done the environmental one. And then yeah, we've exactly. already done the environmental. And that and that's it. Okay. So, thank you for letting me go through. Them. <laughs> um, and I still have one question. Um. And that would be um, on the, the first page entirely, and I think we had this discussion once before. <coughs> it's the very, the very last two sent the very last two sentences. Dead end roadways and driveways shall never exceed 500 feet, which I'm cool with, and must include a bicycle and/or pedestrian connection from a dead end street, uh, from a dead end street to a street, common area, park, or civic space. And I think we had that conversation once before about the fact that what if the, the dead end roadway hits private property and there's no way to connect to anything? And I think we had that discussion once before. I mean, if you you know if you're developing a piece of property in an established neighborhood and you put in a dead end roadway and it hits other private property or it hits the dike or it hits something like that, how you can't do that. But you can, you can, are you saying that, you mean if it, um, if it abuts something that's not a public street, if it's a private way? Well, this is not saying you have to connect to a street. It's saying that it connects to another street or a common area, park, or civic space. So it could be within the project, just so that there is a connection from the street to. So I could put my 150 square foot common area at the end of the dead end street and comply. Yeah. A couple of bushes and a bench and here you are. Bush, well that depends on whether the planning board feels like that meets the standard. Well there we go. And that's that's <laughs> the problem. They're gonna say connect to something that isn't there. I mean does this kill an entire project because you know the only thing you can do is put your hundred and fifty square foot common space at the end of the private road because you like run into the dike or something and so the whole thing can't go because they think it's connected to a public way or something you can traverse like a bike path. 
I, I think that there could be an option to have, you know, the civic space at the end sort of as a, you know, a gateway of view shed from the beginning of the street to the end to the civic space. I think that would qualify. I think also you might do a trail. Another thing that would qualify is if you have a dead end street, you have a trail that loops back around the back of a development and connects back to, you know, let's say the intersection of that dead end street and, the, and another street. Um, there are probably there are a number of ways that you can meet that standard. The idea is that you're not that there is some ability to connect to something. You're not just creating dead end streets for vehicles that don't go anywhere and don't don't connect to the fabric of the rest of the city. But it's a bicycle or pedestrian connection, not a vehicle connection. It could be. That's right. It can be a vehicle connection as well. Then it but then it wouldn't be a dead end street. Then it would, yeah, then it wouldn't be a dead end street anymore. Yeah. I, j I just find that unusual that I could see any number of problems with having to have a connection if there's there's nothing there. Well, for instance, you see your example of the end, um, it dead ends into the dike. And there's a walking path on a significant portion of the dike. So that could be your connection to the dike could then get someone to go through the neighborhood and use the dike to connect somewhere else. So that could potentially qualify as well. What's the rationale? Maybe that would help. What's the, what are we trying to get to here with this? Um, the rationale is to not create um, dead end streets that have no relationship to any other neighborhood or any other um, part of um, um, an existing neighborhood within the city. So you, it doesn't necessarily have to be a vehicular connection, but you could potentially walk between neighborhoods or walk downtown or do a walking loop so you're not just, even if you're walking, you're not going to the end of the dead end street, you have to turn back around just to get out of the neighborhood. We're not creating closed off enclaves. Just for a reference, are there some examples of existing things that we're trying to avoid? Maybe not. Maybe we don't. <laughs> well, there are some. That we've learned from. Is there? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some cul-de-sacs off of Route 66. They come very close together, but they don't connect. So if you live on one of those, you have to go all the way back out to go to the next one and go somewhere else. We actually do have a, um, one connection of a cul-de-sac that was the planning board required a pass-through that's not necessarily for cars, but for emergency access, and it connects the, two, the ends of the two cul-de-sacs to avoid that kind of situation. But if you're, you know, so if you're, um, some of these, um, ones where before we had a 500 foot street limit and they were very long and windy cul-de-sacs mm -hmm. and you're sort of deep into a neighborhood and there's nowhere else to go but to backtrack and so it's really about making sure they're not creating these walled off mm -hmm. little enclaves. But, but this is going to live in, a, in an infill environment in all likelihood in B and C. So you're going to be developing parcels <laughs> of property where perhaps what surrounds the piece you're developing is already spoken for. I mean, there's, it's, this isn't virgin property. It's all private property around this thing. There's no way to connect, it would be nice to, but it's somebody's private property all around this thing, and there's no way to get out. Right, but so also as part of it, you have okay. this civic space requirement. So if you, if there, maybe there's a little 10 foot wide path that takes you from the cul-de-sac to the civic space or park as part of the project. That would qualify too. Um, and so Even though that too is landlocked. But that maybe that too is landlocked, but there it's at least accessible by the people who live there. They have some other place to go as opposed to back and forth <coughs> and back. It's There's not one particular street. residence backyard to have the whole other thing. But right. So what it does is it creates access for at least the people who are within that development or that cul-de-sac to be able to get out and do their bird walk watching or whatever around in, right. the, in the back of the property. So right. It's not necessarily public access, as you said. So I can, right, for the neighbors. Right. So uh, I can put a 150 square foot pocket park and it doesn't have to be at the end, it just has to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that yes. satisfies this? It could. 
Good. What would be the ideal? What would be the ideal scenario then to help? They're just to, what, are, what are we looking at? It would be ideal to connect to something like a bike path or a sidewalk. Right. Or, you know. So in the most extreme sense, let's say you have re reconstruction of the line of the state. Yeah. That's a big parcel that's sort of segregated from the rest of the existing South Street neighborhood. And if maybe a developer comes along and just wants to put one street in and line it with singles and two families. There's also, there's a network of trails back there that could connect to let's say the Fruit Street neighborhood. So the planning board would want to see, well, you have a dead-end street, why don't you connect to existing public street, public, you know, streets so you can make, you know, the people who at least live there can get other places via other means um, than driving back down their cul-de-sac and all the way around. So that's one example in an extreme, sort of a big, in that. now if you're talking about infill, maybe you have um, off of, I don't know, Northern Avenue or something, you're, you back up to the bike path, you know, you could p potentially connect to the bike path, even if you just have one private road that goes back in, at least you have a walking path to the bike path, so it creates a connection. Or you might have just a pocket park inside the neighborhood, and it creates an, a walking environment within the project. 150, 150 square foot. It's going to have to have a treadmill in the middle of it to actually have a walking experience. <laughs> well, you know, I would also suggest that um, in the example of the uh, the Lyman Estate, I think the planning board has the inherent discretion to require the connection to the street without this language. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I I actually think that this. Uh, really limits the, the planning board in the exercise of its discretion because this thing has to connect to something and um, you know I, I completely understand the connection to the other streets if that's possible in public ways and of course with caution even the long windy subdivision roads cul-de-sac connecting because cul-de-sac those are private roads until they're accepted so there's no way that you could require a connection between them because they're private and, and sorry. Is that something that the planning board mentioned or considered as something that would be self limited? No. Mm -hmm. because, Do you think they just didn't think of it? No, I think that um, because it mandates connection with something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think that the planning board has the, the inherent discretion to require connections to other parts of the neighborhood in that you know, as, as uh, Carolyn suggested, would be appropriate, particularly in the Lyman state, if they want to put one road in connected. Why do you think they offered this as? I, I don't know, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't we have that as part of the, we have, do you, can you give us the rationale? Because you were there. Is it I, I think the idea is always to create as many connections as possible, even if it's not vehicular. So if you have a dead end street, you're already creating a street that's going nowhere. So if there's something else to go to, whether you're in a car or not, you need to think about that and create that within the project. And it's really part of their reasoning is when they put in this little bit of language. Um, I it, it's just because you know the board has been trying to create walkable, um, friendly neighborhoods for a long time, and when you create a closed off street that doesn't connect to anywhere. Um, the board, it's important to create, think about other ways to create places for people to walk or bicycle. So, but, 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 but this doesn't do, in, in this language, what it doesn't do is what it does in other languages, talk about to the extent practical, practicable, there should be connection to other streets as, as opposed Would that to, be helpful to say as to opposed to just, to the event possible. Right, and, 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 and because the way, if there's no way to connect to anything here, then you, you could lose a project. And, and I understand the difficulty of this because you're trying to create rules that apply to like a more expansive line in the state or you know the, the parcel behind off of Northern Avenue, which I'm very familiar with. Uh, and then you're also trying to create rules for infill, really small infill, smaller infill, 
uh, and that's what concerns me. Do you think that the language you just offered, which is to the extent practicable, and do you think, uh, Carolyn, that that would be just too wishy-washy? Mm -hmm. Um, I, to the extent practicable, I think is what you just offered as a way to try to offset the concern that Councilor Murphy had, which is the consumption. Because yeah, it's those practical. little isolated infill things that I think, in the spirit of this change, we wanted to encourage these infill things, and I just don't want to lose one because it's not a huge parcel, and it's surrounded by private property, and there's no way to connect the end of it to anything except maybe its own little green space and i don't want to i don't want to have something not happen but because the planning board later says but you can't get anywhere from there but, how about but it, it says to a common area or park or but, civic space but i think it might satisfy some folks if there was at least that wiggle room by saying to the extent practicable mm -hmm. and so that if it were indeed in fact truly impracticable oh, that's may fine may yeah um, I think I think it's contemplated that you would be limiting limiting the number of dead end streets that you could build, and that's kind of the point, right? You only want to build a dead end street if it looks a certain way, which is kind of a good thing. You want you want you don't want a bunch of dead end streets that just go nowhere. Well, this is okay. also driveways, though. Well, public, they're private private streets, right? I mean, so it seems like the virtue of what you propose as written is to push um, developments to a point such such that they start building their dead-end streets in order to do this and if you can't do this then you can't build a dead-end street and it may limit development but I have no idea how much it would practically limit development in the city and that's the virtue of what you're saying well, and that's where my reticence comes from is I don't want the standard to become, well, I'm sorry you can't get anywhere from there, so you can't do it. When it might be a per perfectly viable demonstration of infill, but there's no way to get out at the end. And uh, Would you be satisfied? because of private property. Would you be satisfied with that other, to the extent practicable? Because that would lead then for those cases that you mentioned where it was mm -hmm. absolutely impossible and impracticable for that person to, for that developer to make that case and say it just really is. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm comfortable if it says dead end roadways and driveways shall never exceed 500 feet and to the extent possible must include. Possible. I would say to the maximum extent possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, maximum wouldn't, wouldn't hurt, I mean, because, you know, then, then you're just, I mean, unless they're really, really pushing, I mean, mm. if, there's, if there's absolutely no possibility and it's clear, then it wouldn't be a case where a developer, a project would be shot down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the goal behind all of this is yeah. to encourage infill. So I just don't want to have something here that then well, hangs us up. I'd offer that then to the extent, to the, to the, Maximum extent possible. To the maximum dot, dot, extent dot. possible. Well, I mean, it doesn't hurt to say, if you're going to say to the extent possible, then using the word maximum only makes it a superlative. And it's just not you know, not really much difference. Make any difference to the counselor? To the maximum extent possible? Well, may I make a, just a comment? I mean, Modified? I don't want possible? to be. No, no I, don't, I don't want to be. I don't want to disagree, but it seems like the purpose of this is not necessarily to have as much infill as possible, so a certain kind of infill, and it's the purpose of writing out regulations as, as specific as possible. And the planning board and the planning department seem to have a vision of dead end streets not being a certain way. And so that would be the argument for keeping it, as you propose. Just just some food for thought. Although I completely understand I how, that how, in how the spirit of solves your, solves in the spirit of that you know yeah. you're trying to compromise. Yeah, but we haven't even none of these are moved or seconded these are just right. for when we get right. to that point that would mm -hmm. be that would be some possible some mm -hmm. uh, an additional amendment yeah I'd still like it to say and to the extent possible I mean that still allows the planning board to determine whether it was truly possible or not 
And if they can come up with a way where somebody could connect this thing someplace or just settles for a pocket part with a treadmill in the middle of it so you can actually walk somewhere, um, then I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Is that? That's fine. Does that work? Yeah. And then it's still up to the discretion of the planning board as to whether it was in fact or not possible. Anything else? Would be over. I would move. I would move oh, these with all of those. Well, we need to. Oh, we, we, have to do what? we have a public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, close. Can anybody think of any reason why we can't close this public hearing? Heavens no, Carolyn says. And up here we're good. All right, I'll accept the motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Oh, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh-oh. She's making a positive move here. Getting closer <laughs> to her jack. So, do we have a motion? I'll move uh, these with a positive recommendation as, with those, amended. as amended with the O'Donnell amendments and that last final one, All right. which is that teeny little Okay. Point. Yes. A second? All right. Any further discussion? No, but I think Pam has a question. I just want to make sure we're talking about three amendments. <clears throat> um, we're talking about the, w w did yours total three? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll list my amendments. But she just wants to know the number. Well, it depends how you define it. No, it's only more than three. <laughs> it depends well, what three I mean, means. No, three amendments. amendments to what you've amended. <laughs> right, the amendments that were down on the floor here today. Uh, right. <laughs> well, there were several to environment energy. Yeah. There was one to internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then the last one is just to the extent possible. Is a Thanks, Carolyn. All in favor of let Carolyn go home? Aye. Aye? Okay. Good night, Carolyn. Is that going back to November 20th to council, do you think? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Phew. That's a saga over. And in fact, where is our they didn't want to take I got worn out, I guess. Okay. Yeah, worn out. So, I think, are we good with the uh, Councilor Seawall here? Because I think we're just down to some appointments and and your and your two uh, parking ordinances. Are we doing this? Um, at the very at the very end. Because that can I ask a question about it? that can't be a well. well I'm happy to mention it. Yeah, because um, I have my name's on that. I didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. Well, what what, about. what it is, and I was going to propose this to us, but we can't do this as ordinance because it wasn't posted as part of the ordinance meeting. Yeah. What I was going to propose is that we individually sponsor, you know, we as a, we as a group sponsor these orders that would adopt, and did I give you one of these? Yeah. Basically, these are the recommendations from the compensation committee right and that all we would do would be to send them to council my question is I know that they didn't say, they didn't give anything to us in the form of an order or ordinance mm -hmm. but these were referred to a number of locations first for they were referred to no they, finance. Said that they, they go to finance right I don't think they went anywhere because they, they're not on the floor of comp they were oh, they we were, accepted the they report were, we accepted the report but their taking action on them is not before the council. Okay. So what I was going to propose, um, and, and there was some talk of ordinance doing this as ordinance, but it wasn't on our agenda, so we can't do no. it as ordinance. So what I was going to suggest is that the three of us simply send these to council so that they're on council's agenda and council can yeah, talk we, we can't even talk problem, about it right now. I, 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 it's not on your that. agenda, so I right. mean, you're, yeah. I mean, you but could. We could individually do right. this. But, but if you want to, if you want to do that, um, ordinance committee is not the place to do it. Correct. Okay. All right. So. May I may I interject yes. though that something for our next council for our next council agenda make a suggestion for our for our, at our December meeting is it possible for me to do that can I oh yeah that's housekeeping but but the substantive question about whether not, I'm not going to make yes. a substantive question I'm yes. going to ask if it's possible that we consider drafting an ordinance 
at our next ordinance committee meeting that would consider the items that were that we accepted as a council and to look at from the compensation review board or as an ordinance committee rather than individual without members. ordinance committee the three of us could send this to I know council. We could, but I don't want to send it like this that's why I was hoping that we could consider well doesn't it have to come back to council I mean, well, that, back to this no, it wouldn't if it was if it was sent from. If it's sent it's from, from ordinance, the it would it's get not being sent from this committee. It can't no. be sent from this committee. Oh, no, okay. but council can decide whether they want to refer or not. Um, it, just, I just want the to only reason that I'm, I hesitate to send this to council right now, as worded, is. It says upon the recommendation of each of our names, and there are some things, some concerns that I have about those right. particular recommendations. I, I think we should talk about this oh. not in this committee. Yeah. No, that that, you know. that I left them for you, but they weren't on our agenda. Right. And if no one okay. had asked about them, I wasn't going to bring them up during this meeting because it's not okay. part of this no, meeting. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, because uh, it, it isn't an action of the ordinance committee. It's not on our agenda. Could we leave it for the counts for attorney Seawald to make a recommendation to us as to how we might proceed? He's looking something up for us here as to whether council has. Could to you let us know then by yeah. the next meeting? Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. But there isn't anything imperative, really. No. But this council doesn't have to refer things if it doesn't choose to. Ask. Well, it certainly has to refer appointments. Correct. But that doesn't have yeah. discretion not to. I just but, wanted to make sure that was the only thing it doesn't have discretion to about mm -hmm. that's in the charter so oh but what your your concern is that we could have accepted this report and the city council could just decide to do nothing with it and it would just mm -hmm. die and well it has it has to get there they accepted the report right but it has to get back there right. somehow to be dealt with by council and so that's my, my question I, I understand that individual any one or two or three or whatever councilors could anything send it. anytime we want right uh, but but if we want to do that in such a way that it was we were sending forward something that about which we agree mm -hmm. yeah. but we have to do this straight. yeah but it's not part of this committee i was going to hand them to you afterwards and mm -hmm. so it's not okay. under agenda it's not an action item for ordinance right. um and they're just to be dealt with later so continuing with our agenda i think you were in the middle of dismissing me yeah <laughs> he remembered that because i think we're good with the rest of our agenda without you. great thing. sage advice so Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Let me know if you can help moving. Ah. <laughs> so, back to appointments. Should we talk about the ones about whom, about whom we've already, um, mm -hmm. or the, that we've had conversations with? Mm -hmm. So we got them, we got them uh, number eight yep. on our agenda, is a new appointment uh to council um, arts council to replace a vacancy by robin glenn and that's we've had that one for a while i don't remember i i only had one person to speak with mm -hmm. no. that i'm aware on the agenda of. is that I and have, we've because we haven't met in a while i know these things have been continuing to come talking about? number eight mm -hmm. is uh, that carol no, it's no, Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra Kellen. Oh no, that one came up. That was prior to that to last meeting. Does anyone? Well, I, I was I was assigned to Julia Chevron. I, I don't believe I was assigned an additional person besides Julia Chevron. And that's the rec commission. So let's well, do. Well, you guys have the, the meeting minutes from the twenty second where it was discussed. So okay, yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's Let okay. Me pull it up. Okay. So anyways, let's do the ones that we recall that we can circle back. So Julia, you were going to contact. Yes, I did speak with Julia and um, and I spoke with her about her interest in the recognition. She's very interested. She's in the butter practically. She lives right next to the Florence fields and is a very active user of the city's um, mm -hmm. fields and uh, parks, uh, has a strong interest in Recreation generally in physical fitness is a professor of physical therapy at uh, Springfield Technical Community mm -hmm. College. A uh, very worthy candidate for this post, and I would highly recommend her appointment from that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was going to contact Yvonne Keith, 
And unfortunately, her home phone does not have an answering machine. So I've not been able to reach her during the day, and I have not been able to leave her a message. So I have not talked to her. I do know her, and I think she'd be a perfectly fine member of the Recreation Commission. Could we send her a, but I haven't been able to talk to her personally. But I have no problem recommending her without having been able to speak to her. And she's a she's a known a known person. In fact, she was uh, on the ballot last time. She yes, was, was ran for council. So she's a known person. So are we comfortable moving those two individuals, approving those two individuals for a rec commission? I'm um, certainly, uh, yep. Julia and uh, Yvonne? Sure. Okay. Would you like me to move it? Sure. Did you move it already? I didn't. She so did? Okay. If you go ahead, then I'll I second. would move the positive <laughs> recommendation. Okay. Then I will second. I'll second. Okay. Any more discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Right, there's those two. Thank you. No, none opposed. I'm here for that. And Council on Aging. Is that elected? That's Alexis. Alexis. I uh, I spoke with her, and um, I thought she was very dedicated as she volunteers at the senior center currently, and um, I think she would be a, a good active person to have in the council of aging. So I'd be happy to move her a positive recommendation. Okay. Second. Second. Excellent. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Human Rights Commission, Carolyn Oppenheim. Um, I, I know Carolyn yeah. personally, so, uh, and I, I'm comfortable with her. Did I, does anyone else know Carolyn? I, I think you, you call. She's, she's my constituent. I, I've spoken to her okay. about this. And mm -hmm. I think she'd be good. Excellent. You want to move her? I so move. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, now the Board of Almonders, that's one we just recently got. Mm -hmm. um, and. That's Sue Stubbs, uh, Patricia Ahern, Joseph Mesterka, and Michael Shaughnessy, and, and Andrea Murray. I don't know Andrea Murray. She's on Day Avenue. She's a Ward 3 person. But the other four I know very well and I'm very comfortable with. Uh, Sue Stubbs runs ServiceNet. Pat Ahern and her husband, Mike, are very busy at the senior center. They're very involved there. Joe Mesterka was the uh, business manager for the schools for years and years, and Michael Shaughnessy has been involved in the city for a long time too. But I don't know Andrea Murray, do any of you? Um, I, I know her, she lives in my street, and mm -hmm. I think she might appreciate a phone call about it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give, yeah. give her a call? So do you want, is it all right if we move the other four, Sue Stubbs, Patty, Hearn, Michael Shaughnessy, Michael Shaughnessy and Joseph Mesterka? I'm fine with those. Move those. Defer to the chair. Yeah, no, do um, you want to move uh, those four? I'll move those four. All right, yep, second. second. Sure. Okay, all in favor of those four? Aye. Aye. And then you want to call Andrea? Aye. And Aye. Check in with her, because mm -hmm. these just came to us, so we're not right. we're not behind on these at all. And then the Trust Fund Trust Committee, Committee. Bill, Bill Williams, David Herships, and Jerry Budger, and I don't know anyone that and doesn't know Jerry Budger. Move <laughs> and Dave Herships and Jerry Budger. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless, unless and, and Bill out. Williams, I know. Um, actually, Bill Williams has an interesting Northampton history. He's the reason we have a demolition ordinance because he's the, the fellow that took down the house on Barrett Place oh, yeah. to build a new house, yeah. and he wanted to live close because his wife has a bad knee, and they want to be able to walk downtown. So mm -hmm. he's a, but he's a good guy. He'd uh, be a great one for a trust fund because he's uh, mm -hmm. was a, a very involved business person. Over the years. So do we are we comfortable moving them? Could you move two out of three? Um, I'm comfortable with all three of them. Three. No, all three. Okay. And, and Becker are also yes. fine. Okay, good. So I'll second if there's a motion. Was that a motion? And yes, I'll move all three. All right. All in favor of that group? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that leaves us calling Andrea Murray. And way back in the beginning was Cassandra, 222 Prospect Street, for Arts Council. Yeah, and I don't know what, do, do we recall, does anybody recall who was supposed to speak with her? I was looking for the minutes, Pam, that's all. So I'll, if you, I'll, I'll see if I can find them. I don't have a snap here. I'm happy to do it unless Councilor Ronnie would like to. Actually, what I'd like to do, just because otherwise I feel like I can't remember, is, is to actually see the minutes oh, okay. that we, because sure. we didn't actually approve our minutes. 
Oh, that's true. Not yet. We have still so have that to do. Before we approve them, I just want to uh, yeah. pull it we up. We sort of see. jumped right in to get the mayor on his oh, way. Thank you. Right. Here it is. Okay. okay. So Carol hold on one and second, I, and I'll tell you. We're so accommodating. And we said it was uh, staff to staff. It's probably going to say. We're accommodating the staff who wants to go home to dinner. No appointment. I, I, say, I, I, I will, by next meeting, <laughs> will speak with uh, Cassandra Kellum, and I apologize that I, I overlooked that. Were you, did, was that when you were? Oh, okay. Oh. I, think I, um, I think it was because here I had to find I think the Arts room. Council's been functioning perfectly fine or without. Yes, yeah, but, I, but I think because the other two of you don't know Cassandra, I will actually yeah. call just yeah. to make sure so that I... Yvonne was my call out of that, I remember, and I just... Yeah. It seems strange somebody doesn't have an answering machine, but she doesn't care. But we can't move forward on it without at least a phone call, I guess. All right, because we don't right? Okay. okay, so I will do that and okay. let her know that it will be taken up at the December mm -hmm. 8th or whatever that date okay. is. Is it the 8th that our next meeting? I want say the 4th. Okay. December? Couldn't be as early as the fourth because we're the second Monday. Just a minute. Yeah, the first. Are you talking about rules? Are you talking about this meeting? This meeting. I'm sorry. Correct. It's the eighth. <coughs> it is the eighth. Okay. I thought so you were talking about. I'll let her know that we'll take up her appointment on December eighth, and I'll make sure that the right rest of those will. So before we go on to um, the two ordinances, I accept the motion to approve minutes, so we don't forget. Move to approve the previous meeting minutes. Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so we didn't forget that. So now we're on to, uh, we're back to you again, oh, and you, okay. with your hat as uh, T&P chair. Uh, it's very helpful to have, because you were the chairman at one point. Yes. I mean, it's very helpful because right. so many of these things are, are big shoes to fill. Big shoes <laughs> to fill. So the first ordinance is 312-102, a parking schedule prohibited at all times on Pleasant Street. I would move them to, as a group. As a group? Okay. Uh, so they go together, as many of these do. And, and the other one is 312-109, Pleasant Street schedule for on-street meter zones. So we're going to... Yes. Uh, okay. So you want to explain? Um, sure. So, uh, as you may notice, you frequent the old watering hole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of us do. But um, there has been a bag over... A meter. A yes. meter, yeah, right next to the crosswalk at Michaelman Avenue for a long time, over a year. Yes. Slated for removal and never was. And so and this is for the crosswalk for visibility. This exactly. The meter was was to be removed. Yes. Okay. And so that this will finally remove the meter now for visibility purposes on Pleasant Street. Okay. We have some problems with this being carried over from the last council. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is to create visibility for pedestrians for the cars if they're coming. Exactly. Yeah, it's um, people come in and they don't really realize they're coming into downtown North Hampton at that point, but they really are. They still feel they're on the highway. Mm -hmm. Somebody may be leaving you or a mole in the bag, in fact, and <laughs> step into the crosswalk. There you go. Okay. Um, the bag is frequently stolen as well. They steal the bag? By, by you. Yeah. Okay, so this will get rid of the meter and the bag and make it. All right. So, um, so who moved this one just for. Do we. I, uh, You'll move it? I will move it. Okay, yes. for Thank Pam's you. notes. Second it. And he'll, you'll second it. And any further discussion on these two? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation say aye. 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 Okay. Good. So, a quick look at the agenda. I think we've done everything. We, we need a nod from Pam that, in fact, in her mind, we've done everything before we can leave here. But we did. We finished the one of the world's longest public hearings. And Did you make the announcement <laughs> about the video recording? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I don't did. think I did. I started it, but I don't think I actually, uh, I said that I, I started I was actually just kidding because I came to that item last as I, I was going back. Absolutely. Well, we have been recording, and we did not, just for the record, we did not have any public comment because the only members, people here other than the committee and the solicitor and Pam, the clerk to the committee, was the mayor and Carol and Mitch who spoke. There's no, there's no other crowd, but the camera can kind of show that because showing all the empty seats, we're, we're now here by ourselves. So I think we did do everything we needed to do. I move we adjourn. Second. Is there, by the way, no new business? No. Hearing none. Then all in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Aye.
Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm having a hard time locating the um, actual application from Cassandra. It's not. It, it's just the end there. Well, no, because it's um, it's a, I think it's an older one than the ones that we just got. In fact, I might be wrong. Okay. Because I thought I made copies of those. Oh. Again. Okay. All right. If it is, then. I'll